Hi guys, I welcome you all to the next lecture in our anthropology series. So we were doing epidemiological anthropology. In this we were trying to study what are the diseases faced by mankind. What, what, how, when these diseases are spread, what is the distribution, what is uh, the reason for the, the disease in a particular you can say race or a population or, or a geography because as our, we are studying that we are trying to understand that disease is not common to everybody. For example, people uh, in, in tropical regions have sickle cell because waha pe sickle cell is uh, it has a heterozygous advantage whereas other places when it does not serve any, any other kind of advantage like that it is not there. Right. So, disease has a reason to spread, where it is distributed, what kind of geography, right? what kind of a climate, what kind of a nutritional status, what is the genetic status, all these are determinants of, of a disease. Right. So, in this we have talked about what are infectious diseases. Right. Today, we are going to do what are non-infectious diseases. So, when we talk about non-infectious diseases, everything uh, you can say apart from the infectious diseases comes under this. So, a non-infectious disease, uh, disease is a whole complex of environmental factors and biological responses. That means environment plus your biology, your genetics has a role to play in non-infectious diseases. For example, what are the reasons of cancer? What is the reason of cancer? It could be genetic, it could be environmentally induced, it could be your lifestyle, it could be your uh, kind of food that you eat, it could be smoking, it could be drinking, right. So, uh, it includes the environment which is also the physical environment, right. It is the biotic environment and then bio, bio, uh, in the biology, it is the genetics that play a role, right. So, all these things are make a whole complex for for uh, you know non-infectious diseases right so everything has to be considered the fact that negroes are more susceptible to frostbite now this example we had done in the race chapter also than the eskimos or north american indians may be attributed to the lack of acclimatization and genetic susceptibility so when we were studying when we were studying the cold stress when we were studying the cold stress, I talked about two things. One was the cold genes and uh, again we were talking about the acclimatization to a, right, acclimatization to a place. Okay. So, when Eskimos or Inuits, when we talk about Eskimos or Inuits, okay, who live in these polar regions where there is so much of cold stress is there, okay, they have adapted not only temporarily but permanently to that cold stress they have they have acclimatized to that temporary be permanent be biologically be culturally be right so they have acclimatized to that condition but when you send a person from the tropic to an extreme cold stress his body is going to face a frostbite because mainly because his body is not used to that environment more right and that has to do with the short term acclimatization long term acclimatization his genes the genetics all of that right so this is what it is talking about that if a person will go okay he will have more frostbite so frostbite you can say who are people who are more susceptible to frostbites they are the people who are living on the tropics okay na whereas eskimos ko frostbite nahi hoga so, can we not say that a disease is determined by the place you live in, by the geography uh, that you live in, by the climate that you are, uh, uh, you know, exposed to. So, this is one thing that you should remember as an example. Now, many diseases have been accorded a racial pathology. Now, that means the racial, racial kya hoge? what are races, caucasoid, mongoloid, negroid, right? So, some diseases are also uh, accorded a racial pathology that means it might happen to only Mong Mongolian population, 
it might happen to only caucasian population so like that so uh, but the distribution was entirely related to the environmental peculiarities now what happens is when we were not uh, studying things in detail we were thinking that maybe this is to do with the uh, you know the kind of races but later it was understood okay it is not the race but it was the place because as you know caucasians kaha milenge aapko you will you will find the caucasians in most part of the europe right some part of uh, you know asia also right mongolian population you will find in the higher upper reaches the mongolia the china the southeast asia right and and uh, some aboriginal population of america right so it was understood that it was not the race but the place place geography environment which was causing a disease right so for example abhi abhi let's look at more non infectious uh, disease examples for example cancer of the liver is common among the africans that means uh, there is there is a type of a cancer which is uh, pertaining to the liver theek hai and it is very common in africans because it is a sequel of a widely prevalent liver cirrhosis that means you, there used to be liver cirrhosis and now that that has now pronounced itself to liver cancer now why it is happening and why it is only happening in the africans it is because their consumption is chronically low in animal protein and is rich in carbohydrates that means now what is this this is the nutrition the ecology of nutrition which we can uh, we'll either uh, start it today i'll just give you the brief introduction and we'll complete it tomorrow or uh, else we'll try to complete it tomorrow only so now what is happening precisely what is trying to say is i'll just uh, give you what he is trying uh, this example will clear a lot of things in your uh, in your mind so the usne bola liver ka ek liver cancer is a type of a problem which is common in african population theek hai and it is because of a protein deficient diet and mostly rich in carbs so you know our body requires every kind of a micro macro nutrient right everything every mineral every uh, thing is important proteins are important fats are important carbs are important right every thing is important but it has to balance our body needs everything whether it is the fat whether it is the protein whether it is the carbohydrate it has to balance itself and and uh, it should maintain a level a certain kind of level right in the body when there is a imbalance in this in these uh, you know micro macro nutrients then diseases happen and this we are going to cover in ecology of malnutrition but now you just understand because they are not eating a protein rich diet because their diet is deficient in protein their body is not getting enough uh, uh, you know energy and nutrients that are required uh, for a body you know protein hawai body ke muscles ke liye it's very important otherwise when you do not take protein your wasting stunting starts that wasting kya ho gaya that means your muscles start to your muscles start to degenerate theek hai weakening of muscles hota hai and all of that to aapki body it starts to waste theek hai na it it is not getting the required nutrients so this is how cancer is a non infectious disease but how it is how it is related to a geography how it is related to your nutrition is what we are studying so you can understand now why one non infectious disease can have multiple causation the thing that we were studying that day the web of causation one disease but multiple factors play a role so i hope yahan pe koi doubt nahi hoga and these are the common non communicable diseases there are cardiovascular diseases we have diabetes we have respiratory diseases we have cancers we have and iske alawa bhi you can say there are many others we have blood pressure ka problem bhi hota hai theek hai there usme of course ye heart mein aa gaya theek hai and all of this these are the problems that you we face very often 
राइट सो आई होप यहाँ पे कोई डाउट नहीं है लेट्स मूव ऑन ओके सो स्ट्राइकिंग रेशियल डिफरेंसेस इन द इंसिडेंस ऑफ कॉरोनरी डिजीज इज एसोशिएटेड विद डाइट्स हाई इन फैट सो नाउ व्हाट इज हैपनिंग हमने बोला कि देर इज अ रेशियल पैथोलॉजी दैट मीन्स सम प्लेसेज और और सम डिजीजेज आर कॉमन इन सम रेसेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर हम बोले इफ़ वी टॉक अबाउट फैट ऑब्वियसली हमने बात किया था ना वेन वी वर स्टडिंग एस्कीमोज वी आर टॉक दैट दे टेक द मोस्ट अमाउंट ऑफ एनिमल और एनिमल फैट और जस्ट फैट एंड प्रोटीन राइट द मोस्ट अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोटीन आर टेकन बाय द द एस्कीमोज बिकॉज दे हैव टू कीप दम सेल्फ वॉम दे हैव टू कीप देयर बॉडी वॉम सो दे ईट अ लॉट ऑफ नॉन वेजिटेरियन फूड दैट गिवस दैम दैट हीट दैट इज रिक्वायर्ड अब आप इफ यू ईट सो मच ऑफ फैट एंड एनिमल प्रोटीन इन अ इन अ ट्रॉपिकल कंट्री ठीक है यू यू माइट इट नॉट इट विल नॉट सूट यू ठीक है ना बिकॉज द क्लाइमेट इज सच इट विल नॉट बी कंड्यूसिव टू ईट सो मच ऑफ फैट एंड प्रोटीन बट बिकॉज एस्कीमोज लिव इन सच हॉश कोल्ड एनवायरमेंट दैट द बॉडी इज रिक्वायरिंग दैट so definitely any problem which is occurring because of uh, more eating of animal fat and protein is uh, eskimos are going to be more susceptible to that because wo zyada khate hain right so you understand so many diseases and malformations are known to have genetic basis also to so isme you can just take an example so coronary diseases hogi related to the heart and when we eat a lot of fat right it clogs our arteries so then you can have बिकॉज उसमें देर आर सैचुरेटेड फैट्स देर आर अनसेचुरेटेड फैट्स अनसेचुरेटेड तो दे आर फाइन दे आर गुड बट सैचुरेटेड फैट्स दे आर नॉट गुड एंड इन द मीट इन डेरी प्रोडक्ट्स अनसेचुरेटेड सैचुरेटेड फैट्स आर मोर एंड दे आर नॉट गुड फॉर द बॉडी राइट सो इफ यू ईट मोर सैचुरेटेड फैट देन यू विल हैव द कॉर्नरी डिजीजेज एंड दिस विल इन टर्न बी यू नो पीपल हु ईट मोर such uh, food they will be more susceptible to it uh, susceptible to that disease right so you understand how the web of diseases work right so now this was racial pathology ka bhi we saw the example now comes there is a genetic effect also that means if if for example somebody in your family had certain genetic disorder you might have a, a more incidence of developing that disease so genetic disease even though they are rare However, certain populations have high frequency of such diseases. When we were talking about six-fingered dwarfism, right? When the Amish people had moved, right? They had moved to new place. Their their inbreeding had caused a lot of this genetic disorder to increase in their population, right? So inbreeding can also be one of the reasons of increasing some kind of a non infectious disease so thalassemia sickle cell anemia are hemoglobin variants caused by mutation in the hemoglobin gene and they are genetic so if a parent is having a sickle cell disease it might be possible that it is passed on to the next generation also so i hope you have understood uh, what we were trying to study in the non uh communicable or non infectious diseases and i think um, the ecology of malnutrition we'll try and study tomorrow and uh, if you guys like the lecture please guys like share and subscribe i am trying to go very slow because i know many of you do not have biology as their ba uh, as your background so i want you to understand and there's no hurry we can just uh, take it i i think uh, tomorrow i'll going to finish the 9.8 so guys if you did like the lecture please like share and subscribe thank you